So, Michael, you have been in the headlines over the past few days after tearing down, essentially decapitating the Satanic Temple's uh, symbol, this giant symbol that they placed in the Iowa State Capitol. Take us through what led you to take that action. The so the state of Iowa put this Satanic icon <clears throat> in the Iowa Capitol a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't know exactly when, but they put it up. Um, the I saw news of it on social media, um, and hopefully, like almost the entire uh, country, I would hope, but uh, perhaps not. When I saw it, I thought, "How on earth can satanic icons be in the Capitol?" And I thought, you know, it's some kind of oversight. You know, some little bureaucracy. Uh, they they approved it, but nobody knew about it. And it, once people find out about it, the they'll take it down because how can you, I mean, honor Satan uh, in uh, like they're doing? And so I saw on on Wednesday that it had not been taken down, and I, I didn't know how what the process was with uh, with Iowa, what uh, who the decision makers were, what arguments they were making, um, but I decided to get a plane ticket, go up to Iowa um, and look at the thing myself. And I'll tell you what, you know, whatever emotion you may have felt looking at it on online, um, it's completely different <laughs> when you are actually in the Capitol, you're next to the rotunda, the, um, you know, I'm an American, I've uh, been in the Navy for my entire adult life, I fought to protect the country. And it wasn't to protect Satan. We say, so help me God, not so help me Satan. Um, and then being in the Capitol um, and looking at this statue, this icon, it, you know, it, it just, it, it became very clear to me that this, this could not stand. It could not, it, it was intolerable for it to be there. And uh, so I did what I did. Um, I, I, kind of cleaned up afterward. There was some, you know, debris, some garbage really <clears throat> that had gone outside of the of a little rectangle inside of the Capitol that was uh, allowed by the Capitol for them to be there. Um, put everything back in there so nobody would trip on a candle or something like that. Uh, then I went uh, back into the security uh, terminal uh, and said, hey, uh, I'm back. Um, and this is what I did. I'm turning myself in. And then how did they, how did they react to you when you went and cause most people wouldn't go and turn themselves in after that. How, what was the reaction to that? Uh, you know, it was kind of early in the morning it was like eight 15 or so. I think they were, it was kind of a sleepy, whatever it's Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. Uh, and I mean, hardly anybody was even in the Capitol. I think it was a pretty, I don't know if that's how it normally is. I don't know if it's in session or not, uh, but it, it seemed kind of, you know, sleepy. I mean, they, they were professional, they were, but they, it was kind of laid back. Um, and so I said, hey, uh, that satanic icon, uh, like it's not there anymore. So I said something like that. Uh, and they said, oh, uh, okay. And I said, yeah, I'm turning myself in. I gave them my ID, uh, my phone number and, uh, I didn't know if they were the people to, you know, the right people to talk to, but they were the best people to talk to because there were no, there were no other cops that I saw. And they ended up calling a state trooper um, or a couple of them. And eventually they came over, uh, but they, uh, th they were, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if they were expecting it. They didn't seem to be expecting it, but. Uh, uh, and at that point where you were, were you arrested and charged? Is that the point where, where that happened? So I think there, there is some bad information that got put out by the media. I've seen it in a couple of different outlets. Uh, it never came from me. Uh, I know that I, I was never arrested. There's no okay. shot. Uh, I was never fingerprinted or anything like that. Um, Cause that's, that's what, yeah, that's what multiple yeah. reports are saying that you were arrested. So I was curious, yeah. you know, I, I hadn't seen that, no. you know, and I hadn't seen evidence of that. So you were not arrested. So what, what happened at, at that point then? The, so after I, the, the cops came over, they, they talked uh, to me, they started talking to higher ups uh, because, you know, there's a, a bit more uh, than uh, at play, I guess, here. And so they um, they I don't know exactly who they were speaking with, um, but after about 30 minutes or so of me being there in the Capitol, uh, they said, hey, you know, you're, you're free to go. Um, 
and they had my phone number. They said, Hey, like, we'll, we'll either give you a call <clears throat> or we'll, uh, if it's a few days later, then we'll send you some certified mail. Um, or some, I, I think that's what they said. Um, if they decide to press charges, I think. Um, and then sure enough, about 10 minutes after I left the Capitol, they gave me a call, uh, and they said, Hey, can you come on back to the station and, uh, and sign this uh, paperwork, uh, just saying that, Hey, here's the citation. And I, and so of course I went back, I mean, I already turned myself in once. So yeah, I'll, I'll go back. Um, and they gave me the citation and then I went on my, uh, my merry way. So reports are also stating it's fourth degree criminal mischief. Is that, is that accurate? That's what the that is penalty, what, that is what the citation is for. That is correct. Okay. So, so what happens from here in terms of ramific, and then we'll get into more of the, the theological issues here and, and why you took the action you did. What happens now? What penalties could you face as a result of this? The maximum penalty is uh, for that specific charge is, I believe, up to one year in jail and I think $2,500, $2,700, something like that in fines. That's the, uh, that's the maximum penalty. Um, was that, was that your only question? Did you have a second question? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that is my only question on that front. You know, it's, it's interesting because you've ignited quite a debate, right? Even among, among Christians, you've got, you know, two sides of this, people who are saying, you know, people should be praising you for this and celebrating you because you have taken down a symbol that honestly shouldn't be there. Even if the holiday, even if there's a holiday argument, it's interesting to note that the Satanists are in, by the way, these Satanists, the Satanic Temple is an atheist group you know, technically, um, which is interesting. And, and that's a whole other conversation. But there's no Christmas celebration happening here, right? This is the time of year we celebrate Christmas. And so that symbol has nothing to do with Christmas. The other side will say, well, you know, we shouldn't be destroying property, we shouldn't do this. And you know, you have to allow more free speech, not less, right? So how do you respond to that debate that you've that you've ignited with this? I, I think that it's the wrong debate to have, that it's extremely simple, that, you know, there, there can be, we could talk about this for hours, for days. There are people that are uh, much more intelligent than I am, much more well-versed in uh, making good Christian, good uh, legal arguments, but it really boils down to God is good and deserves praise and Satan is evil and does not deserve praise. And it's not a, uh, they're not equal. Um, there is a, an example that I gave uh, earlier today, I think was, you know, if there was some, you know, fake religious group that they call themselves a religion and they decided that they wanted to honor ISIS uh, or honor Osama bin Laden for 9-11, and they got a permit from a bureauc from a bureaucrat to uh, put a, a a display of the six foot eight foot tall Osama bin Laden inside a state capitol. Who's going to defend that? They're going to be, a, of course. There's always going to be somebody, but that doesn't mean that it's a good argument. That doesn't mean that we have to listen to it. Um, that there's a, a lot of uh, just I think misconceptions about what a what the satanic temple, what the devil is, the devil is bad, and it's not something that we should promote. Well, and I think to make this point too, you know, the satanic temple is an atheist organization that that does not literally worship Satan, but that doesn't mean that putting a symbol of Satan, because there's still a form, the argument can be made that you are still endorsing, when you say hell Satan, even if you don't believe that Satan exists, if you're on that side of the Satanist, of course there are real Satanists out there who do worship Satan, unfortunately, but you're still giving credence and attention to Satan and you're doing it in a public forum. And so again, that's a totally different um, conversation. And you brought up an interesting example there. You also know, I'm sure that there are people who are accusing you of all sorts of things. They're saying this is a PR stunt that you went there knowing you were going to do this. And you know, how do you respond to those people who would wage those you know, accusations your way? Uh, it's not <laughs> um, that the... It, I certainly uh, saw this ahead of time um, and was, uh, but I did not know, I did not have a full plan of what I was going to do. Uh, I didn't know if there was going to be uh, security there um, around the, the icon. I didn't know if there were going to be politicians protesting. Um, and there, there was no set plan. There was certainly an immense dislike 
uh, that I had um, that uh, from seeing it online. Um, but in terms of a PR stunt, you know, I saw that Satanist leader say that another misconception that's out there that I want to make clear um, that there, there's talk that I'm a, an active political candidate. I am not an active political candidate. I have no campaign for office. Uh, I have in the past, but there, there's no campaign for office. Uh, and that is, uh, so, so that's not a, uh, an accurate thing. And for the people that are saying, Hey, you're doing this for some kind of gain. I mean, I'm risking a, when I made that decision in the Capitol, I knew that there was going to be potential penalties. I don't know what the exact, you know, charge was going to be, but I could imagine that, you know, it could lead to jail, could lead to other, you know, severe financial hardship. Um, but it was the right thing to do, um, that we should not tolerate Satan. Um, and so that, that's what I, that's what I say to them. Now th and thank you for clarifying that too, because yes, you know, I know you ran in 2022, I believe there, there have been people saying that you have an active campaign, which is not, which is not true. Uh, and so thank you for clarifying that. What happens now, uh, moving forward here, because obviously you have these potential penalties, what what are the next steps from you, from authorities that you know of at this point? There's a court date on December 29th. Um, and again, I'm not a lawyer, so the I may use the incorrect phrase for exactly the terminology of what of what's going to happen. But I think that's the initial arraignment um, where we enter our plea. We. Uh, we may do that earlier. Uh, we're talking, I'm talking with the lawyers, uh, with counsel right now um, about what the best plan is forward. And uh, I'm certainly going to listen to to their advice, uh, but go with what's in my heart about what the right thing uh, to do going forward is. And, did, and as far as law, have you had law firms reaching out to you? I was curious about that, you know, religious liberty law firms, have you had any of those groups reaching out or have you had to kind of go out and get counsel on your own? So I... Uh, I had a previous relationship with a, a lawyer or a legal relationship with a, a lawyer that I knew from uh, had helped out some military service members uh, in regards to the COVID-19 mandate uh, for the military. Uh, and when I, I have had legal trouble, uh, I, I reached out to those guys and I said, hey, uh, this is one of the, the good guys. So um, I gave him a call and then we certainly had a lot of people uh, offer uh, offer help uh, many pro bono, uh, which has been a, a blessing. Um, I, but we right now I know that I've got my my own personal lawyer. Uh, he's not in Iowa though, so uh, I have retained counsel in Iowa. I think there might be other people that are uh, assisting uh, on the side, but there's certainly been, I don't know all the details on that off the top of my head, um, but I, I do know that uh, it's been it's been great to see the amount of support from the, the legal community uh, in this matter. Yeah, and, and just as we round out to, to a close here, you know, you, you have a lot of attention on this. You've done some interviews, you're talking about it. It's a unique circumstance because most people, when something like this happens, you know, you went right up, you said, look, this is what I did, this is why I did it. You very clearly have stated why you, why you believe that this should not have been there. You know, what is your final message to those who, you know, are on the other side? They're not understanding. You know, you, you've said it. You've given the reason. But I want to kind of give you a chance to, to make your appeal to them because, you know, this seems like something that, that you passionately feel very strongly about. The for people who often what we do, um, I think, just as citizens, as Christians, is it's easy to tolerate a, a slow slow change, a slow uh, inflow of evil uh, in society and our lives. And the an example I've given is the uh, frog in the pot of boiling water that, you know, uh, things seem fine uh, at first, uh, but, you know, after a while, the things that would have 30 years ago, you know, our grandparents would never have accepted regardless of, you know, your current faith background, regardless of if you're a Christian or not, or how, uh, how strong your faith and, and active your faith in Christianity is. I think we can pretty much agree that the, our grandparents' generation would never have tolerated this, let alone uh, the founders when they were creating uh, our legal documents that we adhere to today. 
Um, and so it should be a wake up call that the, the state is allowing or has been allowing this sort of evil to be promoted. And the one example I'll give that's perfect for this is that one of the pieces of hate mail that I got was from an Iowa father. I, th I think he was from Iowa that he was mad at me. Uh, not over any, you know, First Amendment issue, but he was mad because he was unable to show his daughter the statue to the devil in the state capitol. And he wanted, for good, for good, that he wanted to show that this was an example of, hey, how cool is this that we've got the devil in the capitol? And how broken of a society are we if that's the mindset that a parent has for their child? And so there, are, I think there's some deeper questions that uh, that we need to have um, uh, about ourselves and about our country. Well, Michael, I, I appreciate you taking the time, taking us through the story. We'll continue to check in with you as it develops. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.